everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, this one is going to be about art trades and tips for them. Uh, I have a couple bullet points. Uh, I've recorded this uh, voiceover a couple of times and I just, it's been long winded so we're just gonna kind of push through this. Uh, this uh, portrait is actually an art trade with the wonderful rapid fire underscore 101 or Tris. I'm sorry, I have a hard time saying her name because I always want to say Trish. I don't know, it's just natural to my mouth, I guess. <laughs> but a great way to get into art trades is to just reach out. That sounds really super corny, but you can reach out in so many ways. Uh, my main platform is probably Instagram besides YouTube. YouTube's a little harder to reach out um, to. But for Instagram, I like to look for people with similar followings. I have about 165-ish followers, so I try to look for people in that like 120, 200 range, you know, because I don't want to, you know, try to see like seem like I'm mooching off of someone. Like if I do it with somebody who has a thousand followers, you know, the art trade would probably get me more p publicity than they would. Um, which art trades aren't all about publicity. I think it's a great way to connect with friends and connect with artists and just, you know, build that community around yourself. And I think uh, Amino would probably actually be a good place to do art trades too. Um, a lot of times I reach out by looking up the hashtag uh, art trades open or you know looking in people's bios I know I have a little snippet in my bio that says art trades are open and like commissions are open um, and you know even people from school like Tris uh, we actually had a class together in my freshman year and uh, her junior year I think uh, so you know just reach out to art people at your school or on your platform or just really anybody that you know does art and I typically go for people with a platform just because I think it's more fun to get people to post and see what people comment about it and it's just more of a surprising reveal to me but you could do it with friends just you know at lunch or something <laughs> and the reason I like to do art trades is because it's kind of like a commission you know like you're telling this person like what you want from them and then they give it to you and you pay in art like it's kind of the greatest thing because let me tell you, this girl's broke and she ain't got money to commission artists, but I don't know. I like to give people little prompts, you know, like galaxy or flowers or vintage or just something like that, uh, rather than telling them something super specific. And another way I like to go about the whole art trade is doing it with people that have done art trades before. Um, a good way to do this is to just look at their posts. Um, I know I, I used to post like my art and then, cause on Instagram you can like layer images and then I would post theirs afterwards. I kind of stopped doing that but now I have a highlights section on my Instagram because you can do that and I have every person I've done an art trade with and their tag on there and like you can click on their tag and look at it and I always tag them and mention them uh, in that post as well just so that people can go out and see that artist and see what they did as a part of the art trade. I think that's a great thing about art trades is because it gets you guys, it helps kind of cross platform and get you guys more followers and you know that's what a lot of people in social media look for I know it's what I look for uh, it's not all about that I do love connecting with people like Frey the Kid I know we've done uh, multiple art trades I think only two but you know that's that's more than most people I do it with um I don't know I have these bullet points and there's not that many things on there because I kind of just ran through it but a lot of times whenever you know, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. I usually send a prompt and then ask for a due date. Um, not a lot of people do this. Some people are like, oh yeah, I just get it done when it's done. But for me, I like to set something up because I'm someone who's very deadline oriented and I want to, you know, be like, oh, do you want this next Thursday or do you want it like tomorrow or in a month? Like, because some people are also very deadline oriented and want that stuff really quickly. Um, I'm pretty patient. I know I've done art trades with people that didn't get back well, they got back to me, but they're like, sorry, I just really have a lot of stuff that I'm busy with and I don't really have time to sit down and do art right now. And I totally get that because there are like times where I'll go a month without drawing. And honestly, I don't think that's good, but uh, there's times where people get really busy. So I try to just, you know, let it flow and be like, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll post it when we post it. But um, watch out for people like that because some of them, yeah, it's completely innocent. And I totally understand that. But some people will try to scam you out of your art. So I would say just don't post your piece or send your piece until they are done and willing to send it to you. Um, 
I've never personally been scammed, but I know people that have. Uh, you can hear all these crazy stories on YouTube. You can look up like bad art trade experience, but don't let that shy you away, away from them. They're really fun. I don't know, I just love seeing what other artists come up with whenever I give them a prompt and then they, they're just so creative. Us artists, I think we have an amazing community of just creatives and just amazing people with amazing minds and I don't know, it just, it never ceases to amaze me and <laughs> sorry I went on kind of a little rant right there, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you can use these tips in the future or in the present <laughs> and I will see you all next time. Bye!